the Metropolitan Board of Zoning Appeals is now in session for our regularly scheduled meeting on April 7, 2022. I'm Elizabeth Waits and I'll be presenting the cases that are on public hearing today before the board. At this time, I would ask everyone to either turn off or silence your cell phone. The procedure for matters on public hearing today will be to present the site plans, photographs, and maps of the subject properties, letters we've received in support or opposition prior to the deadline stated in the notices sent to neighbors, as well as correspondence from other government agencies are maintained as part of their case record and have been provided to the board members for review. At, con at the conclusion of the staff's presentation, the appellant will have an opportunity to present their case to the board, as well as anyone who is present in support of the application. If there is opposition to a case, the board will then hear from those parties. After the opposition has presented their testimony, the appellant will have an opportunity to rebut the opposition testimony. Pursuant to our board rules, an appellant who does not have opposition present will have five minutes to present their case. In a contested case, the board provides 10 minutes for each side to present their testimony. Should the appellant wish to provide rebuttal testimony, the appellant should reserve some of their allotted 10 minutes. All section numbers that we refer to today come directly from the Metropolitan Zoning Code as adopted by the Metropolitan Council. These procedures, proceedings are recorded, so it's imperative that anyone addressing the board please speak into the microphone, identify yourself here at the table, and provide your address and make your presentation. Please be advised that providing false or misleading testimony to the board may result in the revocation of a permit after a show cause hearing. The board will go through all cases set for public hearing today. After each case, the board will discuss and vote on the case. The Metro Zoning Code requires four affirmative votes to grant an application. If all board members are not present and the board does not reach consensus today, your case will appear back on the board's next docket. Applications that fail to receive four affirmative votes at uh, two consecutive meetings are denied by operational law. The appellant or other interested party may request a rehearing by the board within 60 days after its decision. Parties may also appeal the board's decision to the Ch Davidson County Chancery Court by filing a writ of certiorari within 60 days of the order. All parties are encouraged to seek independent legal counsel regarding the filing of an appeal to ensure that all deadlines and procedures are followed. If you're an appellant and your case is granted, it will be necessary to obtain the permit for which you've applied. Please note the permit must be obtained no more than two years after this board's approval. We have some preliminary announcements for the board this afternoon. The first item on today's agenda, case number 2022-19, is being deferred to May 5th at the request of the applicant. And case number 2022-25 has been withdrawn. There are any members of the public here to speak on that matter, which was a request for a variance at 905 North. Did you say North. 2025 yeah. or 20? I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, is that a note from last time? 20, 2025. Okay, no, that I'm sorry. That's not on today's docket. Um, we also have one item on consent today, which is case number 2022-37. Is there anyone here in opposition to case number 2022-37? This is a request for street and side setback variances at 5008 Marchant Drive. Mr. Chair, seeing none, we would ask for a motion to approve the variance in case number 2022-37, if it pleases the board. I so move. I'll second. second. Or you can second. Chair, I'll second. All in favor of placing that on the consent agenda, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. So. Thank you. And then we, if you could um, please uh, pass a motion approving the variance as well. Uh, sure, I will move that we approve the variance requested in case 2022-37. Second it. Sure. In favor? Any opposed? No. Okay, thank you. So for 
Um, the appellant whose item was just passed on consent, you're free to go now. Um, please give our staff a couple of days to process your permit application and then um, you'll be able to obtain your permit. Before we begin calling the individual cases, um, I wanted to call if there were any council members present. I see council member Pulley. Council member Pulley, would you like to address the board at this time or would you prefer to wait until that matter is called up? At this time, you'll hear from Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. Chair and distinguished members and commissioners of the uh, board. Uh, forgive me, uh, with the backdrop there, I thought for a moment Mr. Lawless was our new school board representative, <laughs> but uh, uh, I guess I'm really happy that's not the case. So, <laughs> uh, I'm here to speak on uh, uh, item number 2022-031B, which is a setback variance at 2402 Valley Brook Drive, uh, and I'm here to inform you of uh, a few things uh, relative to this uh, uh, setback variance. Uh, the facts as I know them are that the uh, applicant tore down the house, uh, poured footings, and then uh, requested a variance. And I believe the variance request is to go back to the place where the original house stood. Uh, and it's not in keeping with the contextual line of uh, that block face. Um, there, and the neighbors uh, have been contacted and uh, they are aware of this and uh, I've received contact from a number of neighbors who are in opposition uh, because they have great concerns about uh, getting outside of the contextual line for what that would do to the neighborhood. I also would like to make you aware of the fact that uh, one of the biggest issues that I see as a district council member when it comes to these uh, uh, setbacks as they relate to contextual lines uh, are a lot of concerns from neighbors when it comes to that. I'm dealing with three uh, over in the Battlemont neighborhood currently where uh, uh, there have been some historical issues and some current issues. Uh, those become problematic from the 2014 ordinance that was passed, which creates a maximum setback, which can be in front of the contextual line. Uh, and you'll see some of those coming before you in the near future. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that uh, those concerns uh, are uh, uh, being brought to my attention throughout the neighborhood. They really uh, would like to see contextual lines remain consistent. Uh, I've not heard from the applicant, and I have heard from a min uh, many of the neighbors, and, and for those reasons, I would state my opposition to this setback variance, uh, and I appreciate uh, the diligence with which you all approach, uh, approach your work, and I trust in your judgment, and, uh, and I thank you all for uh, uh, what you do for the city, because I know it's not easy. Thank you. Thank you. Doing a quick scan of the room, I don't think I see any other council members present today. So we'll go ahead and start with the items on the agenda. So the first item, on the agenda for a presentation today is case number 2022-30, which is a request for a setback variance for properties located at 625 and 637 Claridge Drive in the R10 zoning district. Before you, you will see a map of the, the zoning map of these parcels. The aerial photographed um, to get a sense of the surrounding area. And then we've also got um, a sloped map located on this slide um, with some notations regarding the easements along these two properties. Next, we have photos of the current condition of these two properties. The one, on, the photo on the left is going to be 637 Claridge, which has the TVA easement. This is a photo of 625 Claridge, which includes a stormwater easement. And finally, we have the site plan submitted by the applicant. Um, the contextual setback on this property is going to be roughly 50 feet, whereas there's a platted setback minimum of 30 feet, and the applicant has asked the board to consider a 20-foot setback for both of these lots. Is there any opposition to this case today? 
Okay, seeing none, then we'll have five minutes for the applicant to submit his presentation. If you would please come to the table here. Before he steps up, did you say that there's, because I, I have from the package, it looks like the required setback was 48 feet, and you just said 30, and then I'm looking at a... 30 is the minimum platted setback that's been approved by the Planning Commission. That's the minimum, okay. Yes, and I think that the contextual setback is... is if they want to come to 20, correct? That okay, the applicant is suggesting it's 48.6. It depends. The contextual average should be the four nearest properties, which I've calculated to be 50 feet. I, I see on their survey they have a minimum, minimum setback line that looks like it is 30. That is the minimum setback per the platted. Per the, uh, per the plat that's been approved by the Planning Commission, that was the Davidson County Planning Commission in 1961. But our current code under section, um, it's section, <coughs> I think it's 17.20.030C provides that you take the contextual average of the four nearest properties. So the applicant, if on this plan, the site plan here has calculated what that average would be based on the three nearest properties. But when you calculate it to the four nearest properties, it's a little further back because the fourth property that wasn't calculated with the applicant's um, diagram here is farther back than those other three properties. So it comes closer to 50. Come, it, okay, so the zoning administrator's position would be it would, the required would be 50 yes. under the contextual setback or close to it. It would be. The, the platted setback was back when the zoning ordinance was originally adopted. We just had a table of setbacks, and uh, but as um, as Councilman alluded to in 2014, the council changed the rules based on a contextual measurement of other houses. So we're at 50 as required. Uh, he's requesting 20. If this board grants a variance, he is still required to go to the planning commission and, and amend the subdivision plat uh, to do so. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Button. Done. Uh, Josh Helmer, 1071 Second Avenue South. My name is Brian Musser. I live at 725 Mel Park Drive. So uh, what we're asking for today is it's kind of complicated because we this got put together as one uh, variance. It could have been two, but for lot 27, we're looking to use the platted <clears throat> setback of 30 feet instead of the contextual of what we thought was 48.6. And then for lot 25, because of the TVA easement cutting off the back of the property, we are hoping to get to somewhere around 20 or 22 feet rather than the contextual or, or we won't be able to fit uh, any units on that property. Okay, can we pull up the survey? That, that you, you, it looks like you had a survey done in February. I think that's the bottom picture. Okay, yeah, okay, there it is, yeah. So on, on lot 27, it looks that like you're your uh, hardship is this um, public utility drainage easement along the the left side as we're looking at it. I, I don't know what direction that would be. Is that is that the that's the hardship we're relying on? And how does that affect the the front setback? It so seems like it, it might affect the side setback. If you if you're looking at it from the front, it goes on the right side, and then it uh, kind of curves down behind the property. Um, it was supposed to be, I believe, along the side setback when it was originally put in, but it's eroded over time. And so if we are at the contextual, we'll be uh, building houses right through it. It's hard to see, obviously, on the survey, um, but if you're out there, it curves back into the backyard. I can see it on the survey curving a little bit, but it just doesn't look like it is enough still to, to, to keep you from building towards the back. Maybe those uh, satellite pictures will show it better. Yeah, because I don't think the survey does. It's it shows a little curve. I look and it, it is it's kind of a com it's a looking at the property line. It just looks to me like it curves out a little bit. Can't really see the ditch from the aerial photograph. It's covered by trees. Not out there. It's hard to see it, but. 
it's eroded and it goes into the backyard more than the survey shows. Uh, can, the you, survey can you speak, can you speak up or speak in your microphone? I couldn't. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. I'm sick. Um, the it, it curves into the backyard more than the uh, survey shows. The surveyor obviously drew it probably where the easement is um, with register of deeds or, or stormwater or whatever, but it has eroded and it's into the backyard and we're trying not to disturb it. So you're saying that even though it's a 10 foot utility drainage ditch that appears on the survey, it's, it's wider than 10 feet? No, it, we're not asking for a side setback variance. We're asking for a front because it curve, it goes down the lot line and then curves into the lot. Uh, yeah, I understand that part. So we could disturb it or we could just move the houses forward to the platted setback and not disturb it. It's, so on lot, okay, I'm sorry, I think somebody well, I guess, I guess I was on lot 27, so. Yeah, this is, so how, how are we supposed to understand where that existing, I mean, legally your, your ditch is where, it, or where you have the, uh, the easement for that, right? So how, how are we, I mean, I see your testimony is that, I, I, I guess we're having a hard time understanding it, where, how that um, how that affects your ability to build on that lot because it's not shown anywhere on the plans where it actually is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I understand what you guys are saying. Absolutely, I think what we're what I'm saying is that the field conditions are different than the easement that's recorded. Okay. How are we supposed to know that? Do you have any pictures that show that? Because we have, are having a hard time seeing it just based off of what was in our packet. Yeah, I think just whatever's uh, been taken out there. You can see it's right there just to the right of the um, power pole, and then you can start seeing it curve back, but you can't see the extent of it. So when we met the councilman out there, we kind of walked the property, and then we've talked to the neighbors all around, and all of the water that comes down from the street across the uh, street from this project and up from lot 25 makes its way into that ditch. And so we're not trying to disturb it if we don't have to. It's been there, you know. I, I, I so know. how wide, just approximately, does it bow out from the property line? In addition to the 10-foot, how, how far outside in? of the 10-foot easement is it? Yeah, probably 15 or 20 feet. It curves in. Outside of the, in addition to the 10-foot easement. So it's. That's, that's what it appears on the, on the ground conditions. Yes, sir. So. And so would you say that with either one of these lots, um, if you did build to the contextual setback, you could probably build one house but not two? Uh, no, I, I think on lot 27, if we built to the contextual setback, we would just move the drainage ditch and hope for the best. On lot 25, you could not because of the TBA easement, you couldn't build any. Okay. So moving to lot 25 is the, I studied the survey and your surveyor listed, he has a denomination for overhead power lines, but I couldn't find them on lot 25. I'm assuming, is this cross hatching supposed to be, that's the TVA easement? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so we've designed two, all of these homes are single story. They match the neighborhood. Uh, we've spoken with the neighbors. We've spoken with the council member. Everyone's in support of it. We just need to get these variances in order to fit them on the properties. Anybody have any questions? And there is no opposition, correct? Okay, so y'all y'all have still, still have some time left. Anything else you want to cover with us? I think the important uh, note that I have is on the TVA easement. Our hardship is is pretty self evident in that the you know the the TVA power lines exist and we can't fit the houses there. I think on the other lot, it's a little less self evident. Uh, but that drainage ditch infringes on the back side of that property. So we're just, you know, we're, what we're really asking for is the uh, front setback on the TVA easement. And then, you know, we're looking for the, uh, the, the, platted the, rather the, than the, the platted rather than contextual in the other one. What is the side setback requirement for lot 27? Is it 10 feet? Uh, on the left side, it's going to be five feet. On the right, it's going to be 10 because that easement, we are going to go 20 on the right to stay away from that and then 10 on the left. So on the, on the side where the easement is, is that a, are you saying that's a 25-foot required setback? No, it's a 10. 
Yeah, okay. But we are gonna go 20 to try to avoid the ditch even more. With all of that water coming through there, we don't want to disturb it and have somebody else's house being flooded. <clears throat> so you wanna go a, an additional 10 away from the easement? Correct. And then just bump up to the platted. Okay, any more questions? All right, we'll close the public hearing and discuss. Well, I, I would say I could start with the easy one, easy one, which is lot 25. I definitely see that if that if the cross hatching does represent, which I don't have any reason to doubt it does. I, the surveyor didn't really indicate that on here, but just by the only thing it could be would be the TVA. So I, I really see the hardship there. Um, lot 27. I'm kind of. Uh, with Mr. Newton on that, I don't, I mean, all we've got before us is something that shows a 10 inch, 10, 10 foot, yeah, sorry, uh, 10 foot drainage ditch. And um, I, uh, I just, I'm, I'm uncomfortable that there's not better evidence of why that it's not buildable up to the 10 foot uh, drainage ditch, something more precise. I don't doubt them, but I don't, there's there's nothing in the record and that's um i do think that if it i mean it's a hundred foot lot wide lot yeah so um anyway those are i'm i'm struggling with lot 27 i think lot to me lot 25 is pretty pretty cut and dried so do you think that lot 25 That's a good question. I don't. I, <laughs> you're ahead of me on that one. So I, I just I just spotted the hardship. Forward. I just spotted the hardship. I'm gonna leave yeah. the rest of the. Fair enough. Uh, I, I would agree. I see a hardship on lot 25. My my thought would be more towards the platted setback on that personally, but um, I do think there's a hardship there on that one. And it with it being on the end of the street, uh, the contextual nature of that setback is a little bit less uh, impactful than it would be if it had a house on both sides. Um, again, like kind of like Mr. Pepper was saying, I, I'm having less of a, uh, I'm having a harder time finding the, the hardship on lot 27 as far as that front setback goes. Um, and just, you know, it, I know Miss Davis has a line about horses and courses, yeah. um, but I but I, I, you know I, it, it maybe that that lot's not. I mean, even though the 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 base zoning does allow two family use, maybe that lot doesn't support that necessarily. I agree with the horses and the courses and what you said. Maybe it doesn't support. You don't have to, even though you're zoned R10, you doesn't don't have to have two on one lot. So I don't know. I would be willing to support the request for 30 feet <coughs> for both lots. For, for the 30 foot setback for both lots? Because it's a platted setback. It's something already established. Sure. And, but that's, that's just my thought. So just for clarification on horses and courses. So <laughs> for, for 27, you know, 27 has the, the issue with drainage. Um, but the drainage could be left in place if we do a single family residence, if there's only a single family residence, right? Well, that's what it appears. And, I mean, I also think that it's the burden is on the applicant to show us. And I think normally whenever we give these, like we have really great pictures to support it. Like it's not unreasonable for the applicant to go to the site and take pictures to demonstrate why they need more than what we initially think. So I, I agree with what everybody else has already said. Well, along the lines of what you suggested, I think the applicant said for a lot 27, they were okay with a 30 foot. Okay. So. I, I don't have enough information on 27. To go the 30 feet, yeah. Maybe give it another shot if they really, really want it. Mm -hmm. and, and Ms. Davis is absolutely correct. They have the burden of going mm -hmm. forward since they're making the request. And 
we're here every two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, well, not necessarily at this location, but we come together every two weeks. That sounds better. Um, and I just don't want to guess. I mean, it's, I can't assume facts not presented in evidence. It's just one of those. Mm -hmm. And I know everybody that's been in a law lawsuit has heard that phrase from somebody wearing a black dress at some point in time in their life. And you, I hope, never have to sit there and listen to the judge <laughs> make that comment to you. I have jury duty soon. Oh. <laughs> well, I tend to agree there's nothing in the, um, I mean, all we've got is a survey that shows the 10-foot public utility. And that, that picture, I don't doubt that it's there, but it, I can't see it from the picture. I mean, all I can see is a telephone pole and some... Maybe the thing to do is give... Um, See if they want to, and if they don't want to, if they want to roll the dice. Yeah. We'll also know if they've been sure. listening up here to get a feel for what we're saying. You have any thoughts on that? Yeah, let, yeah, let me, I'm going to open up the public hearing for, if that's, does anybody object to that? For applicants? So what's being discussed is that everybody seems to be on the same page about Lot 25, giving you the 30 feet. I don't know if you're going to get, I think based on what Mr. Lawless is saying and, and probably the way I feel about it, you got at least a couple people that would want to see more for Lot 27. So you can go ahead and have us vote on that, or if you want to, we can we can defer. I don't think there's any problem, even though it's the same application, and there's not a problem with us deferring that one lot, is there, till. So, and I think... I would defer, would defer both, or would defer that? You, you could... I mean, you could grant one and defer the, the other piece if you wanted to sort of split the request up into... So we could grant one. It sounds like you would get 25 granted today. I don't know that you would get... I don't know how everybody would vote on 27, but you have the option if you want to defer that and come back. There's at least a couple members up here that I would want, I think, to see more um, documentation in the record about what's going on with this... I'd call it a washout from the or the or the ditch. So, do you? Um, what would be your preference on that? I got a question for you, Joey. If it's sure. all right. So, um, 27 with the 30-foot platted setback. We're not really asking for a variance. We're asking for what the planning commission gave. So, is that something we can get through them? Yeah. If we don't try to go above the 30 feet, is that something we can get granted elsewhere? No. It has, it to, have to, it be has to be a variance. It okay. does have to be a variance because the contextual setback governs here. Um, okay. And I think just to click clarity to you, Mr. Chairman, it, it may be better. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't split this if you're. You if would you're, not split it. No, I, it would honestly make the order a little easier to write to, <laughs> okay. selfishly. So, but I think it makes the record a little bit cleaner, too, that, that the board acted on it as okay, a package good. rather than. So let me, let me take back what I said. Probably you've got the right, you've got the option today. It sounds like if you come back, if you want to defer this, lot 25 is definitely going to get approved at 30 feet, but we don't want to, we're probably not going to vote to split them up. So if you want to defer on lot 27 to bring us more evidence about what's going on with this, this drainage ditch easement, then you'd also need to defer 25. Okay, so 25, lot 25, we're looking for 20 feet, not 30 feet, because that corner house will not work at 30 feet. So if we're getting our variance on 25, we can probably just throw out 27 and we'll rebuild the ditch. But 30 feet on 25 is not going to work. I don't. We were just trying to prevent any you know, flooding of other homes, but we're happy to rebuild the ditch and, and see what happens. OK, why don't we? Um, so is, it, is your preference here to, to defer? I think we'd like to get the variance on 25, and we can throw out 27 if we need to. Well, we're, but we're, I don't think that's going to happen, because I think everybody's going to agree with Mr. Hargis. He, do, he doesn't think this needs to be split up, So, and I understand that. So we'd either vote today on both, or you can defer and come back with more information about 27. And I don't know that, I mean, what has been discussed is giving you 30 feet on lot 25. I don't know that a motion is going to be made to give you 20. Sir, I think we're speaking the same language. We're okay with you voting no on 27, but we would like you to consider 20 feet on 25 because that TVA easement really cuts off most of that property and makes it 
pretty significant okay. hardship. And we, we can consider it. I just, I mean, where you may be is you may, you may not even get a motion for 20. You may just get a motion for 30. So if we vote on them together, what could happen is you get approved for 30 feet on lot 25 and you get denied on 27. Then, then you also have the option of just put, deferring both of them. But we're not going to split them up. But if we defer, I mean, 27 may go to 30 feet, but 25 is going to be 25, right? The decision on 25 is not going to change between today and well, next. Well, I mean, if you defer, right? you'd have the, there wouldn't be any vote today. So if you deferred, you could, you know, you can come back and uh, ask for, you know, I don't know how that vote, I know what, what Ms. Karpenek spoke about is she was okay with 30 feet on lot 25. I don't know whether, I don't know how the board is going to turn out on giving you 20 feet. But you can address that next time when you come back. But but you, you get, this is a, you're not going to be able to split these up, so. Didn't we didn't we um, defer this so it would be two cases? No, the, the problem with the deferral was your splitting of the parcel after you filed the appeal. When, when you and I spoke for the, when we had the meeting the original time in March, right, and we deferred to this meeting, didn't we do that so it would be two separate cases? So we could advertise two parcels. It was originally one big parcel, and that was the issue with the notice. Okay. We had a notice issue on the first we one because we subdivided yep. it after you filed the appeal. So it wasn't properly advertised to be both both lots. So there's no way to get approval on one and throw one out or get denial on one and approval on one? Hey, can you speak up a little bit? I'm I said there, there's no way to get approval on one and we're either not, we're one. Not, we're not going to split them up. So and we're, we need to put close, close a public hearing. So you, you, I mean, you need to elect here. You can either take your chances with, with us voting on both of them or you can defer it. Yes, sir. So, so if, if, you, if you're not willing to vote yes on 25 and no on 27, that's that's what you're defining as splitting it up. Is that right? Well, that's correct. We're okay. not willing to we're not willing to vote on one. Okay, Understood. we're not willing to split them up. We're going to vote on them. Yes, at the sir. Same in, time, in that so. case, we need to defer. We we need to split these up then. Really, on on well, 20. Uh, I, I don't know that it's going to be possible to split them up at this time because you put them on the same application. That's why we're not splitting them up if, right now. If the applicant's going to defer, I'll talk to them through. Okay. You may. Good to hard. Okay. Mr. Hargis may can help you with that. So how, how long would you like to defer till the next meet, next, next meeting? meeting is fine. That'd be May, May 5th. Is, okay. Uh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. No, it's not. I apologize. April 21st. April 21st, sorry. April 21st. All right, so uh, I'll close the public hearing. I will move that we defer this, this one until April 21st. And I have a second. All in favor, say aye. Any opposed? None. Okay, that passes. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. Okay. Mr. Chair, members of the board, the next case on the docket today is case number 2022-31B. This is a request for a variance from the street setback for property located at 2402 Valley Book Road. This property is located in the RS40 zoning district. From this slide, you're able to see an aerial photograph of the property and the immediately surrounding neighbors. This is a photograph, photographs of the condition of the lot as it exists today. And this is a site plan that's been submitted for the applicant. I believe that we have opposition present today, is that correct? So Mr. Chair, we'll ask the appellant to come forward to the table. You'll have 10 minutes to present your uh, presentation to the board, and just remember that if you want to be able to rebut the opponent testimony that you would want to reserve some of your time. Hey, my name is Baird Graham. I live at 921 Robertson Academy, and I own the 2402 Valley Book Drive property. Um, the reason I'm here today, um, the original house location versus the new proposed building footprint that Metro has. Um, I, like you guys were told earlier, I went in and I did. I, I poured the footer and I got block delivered and I just I kept looking at the job and it's so, the new setbacks are so close to the neighbor on the left. Um, if I go vertical, it just it's just in their backyard. And so if you look at the picture of the, the, the view of the existing house on the Google map picture, you can see 
where the existing house was and how it was fairly close to the back. And now the new house has to be put behind it. And it's, uh, honestly, I stopped doing it because it's so close to the neighbors. I have every right, obviously, to go in right now and I'm approved to build inside these setbacks that are approved by Metro. But it just, it doesn't look right and it sits up on the neighbors so bad. I just, uh, it just had me, I stopped and uh, the only reason I'm here to get a variance is I'm trying to improve the, the way the house looks on, obviously it's an irregular shape lot. It's, it's not a, a square lot like the rest of the neighborhood. I'm not trying to pull it forward um, or do anything crazy. I just, I, the way the house sits um, with the new, with the, the proposed building foundation now is it's so tight and it just, it's all in the neighbors. And I feel like, you know, with the existing house that was there was, I've lived here my whole life, went to Hillsborough High School. I've grown up in this area. Um, I've seen this house my entire life. Um, the way it conformed to the street with the other houses, you know, I feel like it wasn't too close to the road or overbearing and now the way it sits, it's gonna have to sit so far tucked to the back. We have 10 feet, you can see it's 15 feet on the left and 20 feet set back on the right, which is really the backyard and it's, it's extremely tight. And that's, that's really, you know, the reason I'm here is it's not uh, because of the footprint, it's just, it's overbearing on the house to the left and uh, it just makes me uncomfortable um, putting a house that close to the, to a house next door in a great neighborhood what like this. What do those neighbors on either side say about that? The neighbors that you're concerned about it, come, it being too close to, have you? Well, we met yesterday um, with the neighbors here, and I think the biggest concern for them is, variance-wise, is someone else being able to come behind me and get a variance and try to pull a house forward or pull a fast one or do something that you know, behind their backs that the neighborhood wouldn't want to approve. And I fully understand and respect where they're coming from. Again, I live in the neighborhood. I grew up here, I went to Hillsboro, and I have a lot of respect. And I want the area to look nice. I've got a really beautiful house that's cedar shake and copper and stone. It, you know, it fits the area very well. Um, it just, unfortunately, the new, with the, the, where the setbacks are now, the minimum building setback lines is so tight into the back corner that it, it is all over the neighbors. So regardless of the size of the house or which way it's conformed, it's still going to be super tight and so far back in the yard that it. I'm, I'm just wanting to con make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So you've, you've poured, the footings you've poured are in the, are in the allowable building area. And that's, and you're, you're, so you're looking at it now and it's like, wow, that's, that's too, that's too close to the neighbors. It's too close. I'll, I want to move it up to keep it out of that, to get it back to where the original house on this lot was for right. 60 years since. Yeah. Correct. Right. It just, it's, it's awkward. It's, it stinks. And, you know, again, I respect all the neighbors here and their opposition with the variance and the concerns of other people being able to come into the neighborhood and do things. I'm not trying to be some sort of monster to take over anything in the neighborhood. I just, the way it's set up, even if I were to, you know, do a different, there's a lot of, it's just, it's so tight yeah. and it's and right on top of the neighborhood. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying here. Uh, so, and I'm very familiar with this area too. Um, like what, what kind of a footprint of a house are you looking to build on this on this site? Uh, the footprint is thirty-seven forty-eight. Thirty-seven by forty-eight. Okay. The total square footage on the uh, three thousand seven forty-eight. Yep, yep. Okay. Is it two stories? Or it's a story and a half. Stories. It's not a big two story. So some of that square footage is in the half story. Yes, ma'am. Well, there, there's a little bit more square footage upstairs. It's like that's, a 4,800 4, square foot, okay, close, to, totally. close to 5,000. But it's, yeah, 3748 of lot coverage is what you're saying. Okay. It just relieves the neighbors, you know, from a super, you know, tight lot. Not only does it it pulls it forward and away from the house next door, um, and it relieves it from, I think, 15 feet to closer to almost 26, 20, 25 feet. Okay, Mr. Graham, uh, any more questions from, uh, anybody have any more questions for Mr. Graham? Okay, you may have some time left for rebuttal. He do, you do. You got some time left for rebuttal. Good. After your neighbor's talk, yeah. Right. Thanks. 
Okay, would members of the community who wish to be heard in opposition to this matter please come forward? Just collectively, you'll all have 10 minutes together. Well, however, however many speakers you have, just be sure to divide your time accordingly. Um, that 10 minutes is overall, not per person. But. Good afternoon. I'm Sarah Maddox. I live at 2400 Valley Brook Road, and I oppose this variance. We've lived at 2400 Valley Brook Road since 1976. We were friends with our neighbors, the McGowans, at 2402 until they passed away and sold the house. Their son sold the house. We were concerned when the house was raised to build a new home as the new builders do not keep to the style or context, if you will, of our existing neighborhood. We believe this re request for variance is a validation of our concerns. We oppose the variance that would allow the house to be closer to the street than current codes allowed. We feel that the footprint of the proposed house is too big for the lot and that the developer should get a redesign. We feel that he is currently wishing to seek forgiveness rather than permission. Allowing this variance would give others permission to do the same and change the beauty and personality of our neighborhood. Thank you so much for your consideration. You. Uh, my name is William Hunt. I live at uh, 3421 Valley Brook Road. I've lived there approximately 40 years. Um, and you, uh, Woodmont Estates is just a unique uh, uh, subdivision, probably one of the first in Nashville that I know of. And uh, it's just, uh, this, this house seems to be awfully large to be on this small lot. Uh, that's, that's one of my things. And I don't understand why the uh, footings were poured. Uh, I mean, he should have known, he could have seen what he was, I mean, I just don't, I don't get why that was done. Uh, I don't, and I don't really feel this is a hardship case. I think the, sh the house just should be smaller. Uh, I think that the house that was there was quite about three times smaller than this one, and it's a real unusual shaped lot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's hard to get a house of that size on that lot. And we just don't want to set a precedence in the neighborhood of having this happen. Uh, it's, we've all lived here quite a while and just feel like uh, that this is, uh, it, I just don't really want it to be, be done. If if the if the house that he's building was was being built and was the same size as what was there, would you have an issue with it? Probably not as no, not as much. No, this is just a large house on a, on a really unusual. I think it's very unusual, hard to build on lot personally. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Hello, I'm I'm Mary John Hicks. I'm at thirty five twelve Echo Hill Road. Um, I'm about three houses away from this house that we're talking about. I've lived in the neighborhood uh, nearly 40 years, and I'm opposed to the variance, and the reason is because I don't think it's a hardship case at all. There again, um, it is an odd-shaped lot, but he saw what the house was before he tore it down. He should have known, he, his architect should have known that it had been moved back, and it would take, it would be a smaller foot, have to be a little smaller footprint and push back a little bit. He tore it down, he had months to plan for this new house, almost a year, I think. And, but he poured those footings anyway. And then later, as he told you, he saw it and felt bad about it and he saw that it was an awkward, uh, pushed in the corner house. So I don't think that really claims a hardship because he had second thoughts. Uh, I think his plans could be changed, and we asked him when we met with him if he would please change it to a smaller house, because we don't have anything against his building. It's probably fine. It's just it needs a smaller house on this particular lot, and um, he didn't seem to want to do that. Um, Six, just so I'm clear, would you, if, 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 if the applicant was building the same size house and wanted the same setback, which is really where the original house were, you, you wouldn't have an issue with that? Probably not. I have not seen that put back in that spot. As long as it, you know, I, I don't know how it would fit because it may have to be, it's, it's pushed back into the, to that L shape, so it might have to be a different configuration. The, the one before was a ranch, so it was, it was elongated. This is now pushed in a corner, so he may have to make a little bit different shape. I'm not, I'm not sure, I'd have to see it. But probably a smaller house would fit. 
We're mainly concerned that this a variance of any kind of our neighborhood would set a precedence. And we sure don't want a precedence. Like he said, we are, we're afraid that, you know, another developer will come in and say, well, there was a precedence. I can build my house closer in. We've got larger lawns and our houses are back. And, and we don't want somebody to take advantage of that and bring their houses forward just because someone else did for a different reason. And we feel that this could be a variance. This could go over and over and over, and we'll be coming in here every, every year because of everybody's building new houses. So we're just, we're just saying we don't want to lose the integrity of our neighborhood. We're hoping it just sticks to a smaller plan somehow. And we also, one last thought, well, some people brought up the idea, if he did bring the house closer in, He's planning to put a, a nice driveway in front. Well, that's just taking up the entire beautiful lawn that we love so much in the neighborhood. And it would really take up a lot of that lawn. So it would be inconsistent. Uh, so we just don't think it's a hardship, and we, we don't think he needs the variance for this particular lot. Thank you. Great, thank you. Can we get that time? Okay, I'll make it short. My name is Marion Lyles, and I live at 3506 Echo Hill Road, just down the, up the hill from um, the property at 2402 Valley Brook. I'm here to voice my opposition to the zoning variance request for many of the same reasons that have already been stated. I feel like it sets a, an undesirable precedent for our neighborhood, and I also don't understand how this could be looked on as a hardship case when the applicant had plenty of time to do his due diligence before he even had the plans drawn. But he went ahead and he poured footings, and I'm under, I understand that he did that even without the benefit of a building permit. And um, I just think it's a, it's a problem because he got into it and realized that he could not fit this house on the lot. The lot is one of the smallest lots in Woodmont Estates, and the pre-existing house was one of the smallest houses in Woodmont Estates. Um, a 5,000 square foot house just is not going to fit on that lot. So I don't believe um, that he deserves a zoning variance. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jennifer Cox. My husband and I, Frank Berryman, live at 3411 Valley Brook Road. We moved there in 1996. Um, we see no hardship in this case, and we oppose the request for the variance. Um, in the 26 years that we've lived on Valley Brook, we've seen many houses be remodeled, have additions, be torn down, new homes put up, and all of those buildings respected the setback. Um, and we think that's an important part of, of our beautiful neighborhood. At a recent meeting with the builder, um, we asked if he would be willing, I asked specifically if he would be willing to put a smaller house on the property. And he looked me straight in the eye and said, no, he was not willing to do that. He did tell us that he was planning on putting $2 million into the house and that he would sell it for four to $4.5 million. So uh, a smaller house, with a smaller footprint could still make a considerable amount of money um, as, a, as a new construction in that neighborhood. The other thing to know is, is that beautiful curved driveway also has a large parking area, two large parking areas that are almost as big as the footprint of the house itself so that there will be very little green space left if he chooses to build by moving it forward. We still haven't seen the plat with the house placed properly on the, the lot. So for this reason, uh, we oppose the variance. We wish to maintain the beauty and integrity of our wonderful neighborhood, and I appreciate your time today. I'm Mary Jo Shankel. I live at 2412 Valley Brook Road, three houses down from the lot in question. Um, we're the third owners of the house. Um, we've lived there for 22 years. I echo everything my neighbors say, but I also want to um, emphasize the historic nature of our neighborhood um, laid out by the Olmstead Brothers firm in 1937. And this is an original, fascinating um, marketing plot um, pamphlet. And the Olmstead firm, as you know, laid out Central Park and Druid Hills in Atlanta, part of the Fisk University campus. Um, and also the Biltmore State. So, and there's a plaque in the neighborhood um, 
we don't want to lose the, the beauty and the integrity of this neighborhood in what's a very built up area of Green Hills. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Amy Cooper and I live at 2408 Valley Brook Road. I am right next door, Miss Cooper. I'm right next door. Okay, and then yes. well, really quickly, Mr. <laughs> Maddox, or the, the, Mr. Maddox has spoke. Are you right next door too? Yes. Okay. All right. I, okay. And I still oppose the variance. I'm in favor of keeping the continuity and the consistency of our neighborhood. I'm Pat Meadows. I live at 2424 Bear Road, which connects to Valley Brook at both ends and backs up to Valley Brook. I bought my house about five and a half years ago. It has the same square footage as what he is referring to now, but I only added about 200 square feet and it's just fine on the lot that I have. Uh, I, I just think he's a professional, so he should have known what he was getting into and it, I'm opposed to this and um, I just think it will it will really be an encroachment on the, the character of this neighborhood, which was developed long ago, was very successful, and continues to be successful. Thank you. Thank you. How much time do we have? Okay, we got two minutes. <laughs> Good timing. That was good timing. I, and I actually have a question for, I guess, most of the residents in opposition, Mr. Chairman. This is out of, don't know how to address That's any one way. particular person, but folks, and again, I listened to the council member from that, that came through. What's the predominant size of the homes in this neighborhood? And if you're going to answer the question, if I could ask you to come to the microphone so that our recording can capture your answer. Thank you. And choose your representative. <laughs> yeah, pick somebody yeah. if you wouldn't mind. I, I mean, I'm. Ma'am, could you could you come up and then state your name again for the record? My name is Marion Lyles. I live at 3506 Echo Hill Road. I think it's actually in a state of flux right now because there has been some new construction in our neighborhood. And for instance, I have an 11,000 square foot house next door to me and a 5,000 square foot house on the other side. But my house, which is original to the neighborhood, is 4,000 square feet. So it's all over the, you're all over the of, spectrum. It's, it's a broad spectrum. But I would say the original homes were all probably at the time, most of them have been added on to in one way or another, but when they were built, they were probably around 2,500 square feet. The very traditional, classical neighborhood, two-story Georgian homes, um, that's how it started out. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And sir, if you'll state your name, and, and, and if you would, just answer the question yeah, that Mr. Lawless asked, which is, One what question. is the average uh, square foot of the, of the, or average size of the homes? The houses uh, in this neighborhood vary in size. Oh, name, address, name and address, please, oh, sir. 3411 Valley Brook Road, Frank Berryman. I was going to say that the uh, size of the houses vary because the lot size varies. A one-acre lot is small in this neighborhood. <clears throat> I have a one-acre lot, and I have a 2,700-square-foot house on it. There are also three-acre lots, and there are five-acre lots. The problem is he wants to put a house that fits on a three-acre lot on a one-acre lot. Thank you, sir. And the, the house that was there, do you mind if I just go through? I don't know how, I, no, who right. wants to be the, the, <laughs> the, the answer point person. <laughs> person here? I'm, whoever wants to be, if you wouldn't mind coming up here and at least letting us know who you are. I've got about two or three more questions, Mr. Chairman, and then I'm gonna leave it be. I okay, just, that's fine, yeah, sure. This microphone that's not and sick. If you could state your name again and address <laughs> again, please. That was a very smart thing to do, ma'am. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Question. You need to state your name and address again, please. Mayor John Hicks at 3512 Echo Hill Road. All right. Ms. Hicks, are there a bunch of trees on this lot? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, there were. There's some of them gone now. But there, there may be. I don't know how many trees are left. Does anybody know? Across the front, there's still a few trees in the front. I don't okay. know. Okay. 
course, of but in the back there, you knew I was going to ask that question at some point in time in these <laughs> hearings today. Um, All right, I, Miss Hicks, do you, is is the um, is is the creek? I know that the creek kind of goes along Valley Brook. There is that on the opposite side from this house. Yes, yeah, so on the okay. opposite side, okay. it has nothing to do with this house. Okay, thanks. No. Do you recall, and you may not know, but do you have an idea of the size of the house that was there before the yeah. building start, started? It was what, uh, 2,000. 2,000 square feet. Okay. And a little ranch Mid with two bedroom, two bath. A little bit of Mid-century Mid Mid modern. Yeah. It was a neat little house. We all liked it. I hated to see it go. <laughs> I remember that house. Yeah. Now everybody wants to move down to that size, see. <laughs> so... Do you, anybody have any more questions? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank We're gonna, you. The uh, applicant has how much time for rebuttal? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay. Mr. Graham, you want to come back up? Do you have a rebuttal? Um, again, I'm, I'm not Baird Graham, 921 Robertson Academy Road. I own 242 Valley Brook. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to go against the neighbors. I respect every single one of them and what they're looking to do. Um, you know, I'm not trying to pull a fast one. Yes, I made a mistake. It looks too tight with the, you know, for the footer. Um, what my biggest fear is, honestly, if this doesn't work out, I'm, I'm going to sell this and get, just be free of it. Um, and I'm worried about someone else coming in and not caring and is going to build a house right next to Miss Cooper, and it's going to look awful. And again, I, it just, it, I'm here to try to make a neighborhood So, Mr. Stay Graham, they're, they're, not, what your neighbor's concern is, is that one concern I hear is that what you're building is three times bigger than what was there, and that they've asked, apparently, according to them, they've asked that you consider making the house smaller and you've you not... Well, I mean, you, you it's, won't do it's that. tough is that, at is this that point. Accurate? Is yes, that sir. We talked about it yesterday. It's tough to go back at this point and, and again, you know, redesigning a, a new set of plants. It's 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 a lot of time and spend a lot of money. And at this point, again, I'm not trying to argue or go against it. If it's if it doesn't work out, if again, I'm not. I'm going to sell the property and I'm just going to be free. I don't want to have bad enemies with any neighbors. I've lived here my entire life. I've lived here for 42 years. I love this neighborhood. I love this town. I love the city. I build more than most people do around here with you guys. And again, I'm not, you know, I'm trying to pull any fast ones. I think the house um, whatever house that will go there in the future with the setbacks that are there now are going, it's going to look awkward and they can, and I, I understand where they're coming from with the bigger house or, I, you know, but this isn't some huge gaudy house. There's huge houses everywhere in this neighborhood. Trouble I, I'm having today, um, is that we really can't see, we, we don't have in our packet what you're going to build and what, gotcha. the, how the footprint is your new proposed footprint is working on this actual right. site. So it's really hard for us to- I understand, to I understand. Well, look, um, listen, again, my, my concern is what's gonna happen in the future when someone does build there, the footprint that Metro has allotted for this irregular lot sets it in the very back corner and the- We yeah, can see Cooper's that. are gonna have a hard time. Well, all right, thank you. Thank you. Did, All right. Did anyone have questions? Yeah, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Graham before he? <laughs> okay. All right, we'll close the public hearing and, and uh, discuss. I, I, would, I mean, I would personally like to see more information, and um, I don't feel like I could make a decision today without this information. It's a decision in support of a variance without... Typically, we would get plans on something like this. We would see the plans where? of the house, where, like, how many where rooms? Is yeah, where proposed. is it? Yeah. So, like, it's it's in a regular shape lot. So, typically, it, a, a variance. I understand the neighbors' concerns, and I really, I, I really do. Like, my heart de definitely feels for them. But I know by looking at this lot, depending on what you put there, we would likely give a variance because it is a pie-shaped lot. We that's a. The code was written for lots like that. But like you said, typically, if you're asking for 40 feet, we need more than just a survey. We need to know where you're going to put it, the square footage, all that stuff. So yeah. I, you asked my question. So I'm, I'm in the same boat. 
So maybe we should open the uh, public hearing to ask the applicant whether he wants a deferral. I to think get it would be an excellent decision so, on his. Part. Mr. Graham, uh, so here's where we are. Can you can you come up, please, sir? We also need to get yeah. some feedback from the, uh, the neighborhood, about the obviously, right. because there are a whole. So it thing. it sounds like where we're going is that you would not get this variance approved today, but that you would have a chance of getting the variance in some shape, maybe if you supplied more information, namely a site plan, so we can see what you're building and where it's going. So I think if you if you want to defer it, we can defer it, and you can get that information to us. If you don't want to defer it, then it doesn't sound to me like it's going to pass today. I could be wrong, but... I'd, I'd like to defer it just for you guys to look at it. Again, I... And if you heard the concerns about what we can't see... I agree. Is, I mean, I have the plans with me that just weren't... It wasn't ready in time, so. Okay. So can deferral. we get some elevations as well, just so we yeah, understand sir. the scale? I'll have the full, full set. I mean, I can leave them with you guys as well if you want to keep. Them. So, uh, okay. Thank you, sir. We'll close the public uh, hearing. Some photos oh, might photos. be helpful. Some photos. Really 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 I'll get. I'll get everything you need. Be a next meeting or the two meetings, which. Well, I think it'd be April 21st. Would that work for you to get things in line? Well, can okay. We, can we get some feedback from the? Yeah, there's a lot of them that showed up today. There's so. a whole bunch of them showing up, and I... Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll leave the public hearing open, and, and uh, if y'all want to... I mean, what we're proposing here is to allow the applicant two more weeks to give us a site plan so that we can uh, make a decision. Does anybody feel like you would need... You want more time to see, see what he's going to submit? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, why don't you come up and we'll, we'll let you talk. Uh, we're, we're fine with the deferral if, if he, oh, I'm sorry, Mary John Hicks, 3512 Echo Hill Road. We're fine with the deferral. It's just that um, he didn't have his plans today. Why didn't he come prepared? He didn't come prepared to our meeting either. And we think you would be prepared, but are you going to bring the same large house back or you have time to change it, but uh, yeah, we've got a crowd here today. I don't, you know, two weeks. It's hard to get a big crowd here, <laughs> but um, we'll do what we have to do. We just, we just want to save the neighborhood. Well, His work's excellent. He does good stuff. Two weeks? Do you think enough for y'all to get? I'd rather have more just to get it together and give we'd him a little open. time. I think since you came today, we'd be open. To, we, we can defer at two meetings. That would give you at least four weeks. So would that work better? It sounds like that would work better yeah. for the neighbors. Sure. So. Can you do that? Well, see, that would maybe give us a little chance and maybe give him a chance. We have we have listened to your testimony today. We, we, we've heard your testimony. And, I mean, you know, yeah. so. we want a nice house. We just don't want it on this. I kind of think he's heard some of what you guys have been saying, too. Oh, we met. Yesterday and had a good meeting. No, but I think he heard it a little more seriously today. I may oh. be reading him wrong. I'm looking at his eyes right now. No. <laughs> so is all, all construction halted until? Uh, yeah. Is that yeah. right? Everything's halted until then? Is that? Right. Just. There will be no vote taken today except we'll defer it for four. I think y'all y'all want four weeks. I don't think he objects. He wants a deferral, so we'll do four weeks. Make a motion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's good. let's close the public hearing and okay. let's. Can I, can I say I want to thank the neighbor who told, told us about the Frederick Law or the Olmstead. That was that was. I have lived. I have lived. I have lived in Nashville my whole life. I grew up right down the street. Went to church. Right, go to, still go to church right down the street. I never knew that that was an Olmstead uh, neighborhood. There's and a actually, sign. Uh, the one of the houses back here. Some fr old family friends lived in for 50 years. And so I, that's <laughs> that's wild to know. That's cool. Thank Great. You. Thank okay, you. Okay. So we'll close the public hearing and. Uh, Motion to defer till second. Okay, May what's the date of the May meeting 5th. after next? May fifth. May fifth. May fifth. There's a motion and a second to defer to me May fifth. All in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Any opposed? None opposed. Okay, that's deferred until May fifth. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you all. Yeah, uh, if we could take a five minute break right now. <laughs>
two, one. So our uh, Board of Zoning Appeals is back in session. The next item on your agenda is case number 2022-35. This is a request for, for a variance from the street setback for property located at 347 Elysian Fields Road. It's located in the R8 zoning district. We have the zoning map as well as the aerial map, the surrounding area. This is the house. Um, you can see that the porch has, has already been constructed. So it was determined after construction that it had encroached into the contextual variance. This is a couple of shots of the streetscape there and then a rendering that's been submitted by the applicant. There are no more opposition to any of the cases remaining on the docket, so if the applicant would come forward and sit here at the table, please, to make your presentation, you will have five minutes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, my name is Elmar Martinez. This is my father, Guadalupe. We're on 3047 Elysian Fields. We are here today because we purchased this house, well, my father purchased this house 2020. In the year of 2020, it was built in 1962, so you can already imagine the condition it was in. So we did a, a lot of upgrades to the house inside, and we also repaired the front porch. Uh, we did fail to get the building permit because we thought we, it was just a repair. Was there a porch already there? Yeah, it was a small one, and it was fallen, actually. <laughs> Did you so, demolish it and build this, or did you add on to it? Yeah, we demolished what was already there, and we just added well, uh, the new one. How much did you add? Uh, the old porch, the old front porch was 15 by 8. It was 15 by 4, but we moved it to 15 by 8, so 4 feet over. Thank you. And we had 30 feet from the setback, from the required setbacks. And so we just repaired it. Okay, any, any questions for the applicant? And so it looks like, just from this survey that I have, it looks like the platted setback is 30 feet and uh, the front of the, the porch as it stands right now is 32.2 feet. Um, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. But the street, the contextual setback is 37.25 uh, feet. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, if you, if there are no more questions for you, you're certainly welcome to say more if you feel like you need to. But if not, we'll close the public hearing. We'll We're set. Okay. We're Thank set. Thank you very much. Okay. Public hearing is closed. Thoughts? It, I, I think if, if they had built back on the exact uh, exact footprint that was there before, I think there'd be no question about this. I mean, that. Can we go to the picture again? Yes, which one? Oh, the, of the. Of the. Show the right there. Okay, thank you. Um, but. I mean, it. The bricks underneath they, there were what they probably had. Maybe so, yeah. That would make sense from the 60s. Yeah. I mean, they clearly did a nice job with it. <laughs> oh, great looking uh, front porch. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> the and, neighbors well, love it. If you do look at the houses all down to the, um, I think it's kind of unique in the sense that all the houses to the west appear to be in that 32 point something range. It's really, and it kind of goes around the curve, and then it's when you get to the 40, 40 to 1 to 42 foot range. So, 
that is kind of an unusual circumstance that this one's kind of stuck in the middle there, um, kind of in a regular lot condition. So that would be a, a hardship? Yeah. An identified hardship? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that followed by a motion about the hardship? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve based, uh, approve the variance um, based on the hardship of the um, kind of regular condition of the lot being within two, uh, two kind of different uh, contextual zone uh, averages. You got a bunch of people. Second. I second. Oh. Yeah. I mean, you got th this entire side <laughs> seconding. Uh, okay. So we have a second. Uh, all in favor of that motion say out, vote aye, aye. Any opposed, none opposed, that motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. item on the agenda is case 2022-36. This is an item A appeal, the zoning administrator's determination that a sidewalk is required for a two, new two-family development at 345 Edwin Street, which is located in the R6A zoning district. We have the zoning map. This is a aerial photograph of the area. This is the current condition of the property. Photographs submitted that show the corner sidewalk that the applicant is appealing. This is a sidewalk requirements map that's available to the public on Nashville.gov, which confirms that this, that uh, properties, new developments on Edwin Street do require a sidewalk. And these are photographs. The one on the left is a photograph of the streetscape going down Edwin. And then the photograph on the right is the next block face down at the other corner, which is Meridian, where there is a sidewalk along Edwin. If the applicant would please come forward. Actually, Ms. Waits, in, in an item A case, um, I usually go first in this one. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that one, come forward. I'll, uh, uh, I apologize. Your, it's your first item A, so no, no harm done. Thank um, you. Good to know. No. The, um, actually, if you don't mind, could you give me the photograph the appellant submitted? And this will be the... Um, the photographs at the corner. Right there. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Um, members, before the, uh, Joey Hargis, the Metro Zoning Administrator, uh, the zoning code requires sidewalk construction. Uh, Ms. Waits showed you the maps that we use to d make that determination. Uh, part, of, part of the job of my examiners and myself at times is to make a determination whether that sidewalk turns the corner uh, and begins going down the new street. Um, in multiple locations, Metro has gone through the sidewalk network in the county and upgraded ADA uh, corners and intersections, including the um, I think little rumble strip that's there. Um, the applicant submitted in his uh, submittal a copy of the um, specifications that uh, NDOT requires. And I'll, I'll make note of uh, that little rumble strip I'm talking about is drawing number ST330 in his book. But when I look at the upper, both both the left-hand photograph that the applicant submitted and the right, as well as the aerial photographs, uh, in my mind, the applicant talks about that as that's part of a, a curb or or the as part of the ADA compliance. To me, that is the continuation of the sidewalk down Lishy in this instance, or down Edwin in this case. So in my mind, when I look at that photograph uh, and the aerials, uh, they've turned the corner and begun construction on Edwin. Uh, new construction, therefore, by that determination, he's now required sidewalks and is not eligible for an in lieu of contribution. So he's appealed that determination. But those, that's that's how I made that determination. You look at those photographs there, um, and that turning there. We have we have had we have had instances where this installation did not occur when they've stopped it here, uh, which we have not said that's a turning of the corner. But with this installation. We're now begun the path of extending the sidewalks down there. So, 
So, Mr. Hargis, that's the that that is the primary driver as to as to why he has to build sidewalks on on the, on this street on this block face. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. The the zoning code itself requires them along the block face uh, when there uh, is an existing sidewalk in need of repair um, to extend the existing sidewalk or replace uh, as part of of an existing development plan, which really isn't at play here. Letter C is the one he's appealed on, and it states that. Um, New sidewalks are required when the existing sidewalk is present in the same block face. And that's what I submit to this board, that the turning of that corner is within the block face. And the block face runs from street to street, uh, from Edwin uh, down to Lishy. Should that be the beginning? Yeah, well, if you had any questions for me, since I only get... He gets a rebuttal in, in his testimony, too, so. Okay. Any questions for me? Okay. All right, sir. Turn it I, I do have a question. Oh, yeah, shoot. So then is this, does the applicant have five minutes or ten minutes? He's actually got ten. Okay, so, thank you. No worries. Mm. Okay, my name is John Rankin. I live at 1709 Woodland Street. Um, I'm here because, for, for just a very simple reason, um, we built four houses in this exact spot, um, at 341 A and B and 343 A and B last year, and it was uh, tagged the permits as sidewalks not required. This turn was still there at the corner. We applied for two more uh, this year, and it was tagged side sidewalks required, um, even though it's the same physical condition. So the evidence I presented here to say for our belief that this is not a, an existing sidewalk on the block face is, number one, that turn was not created in a metro project that included Edwin Street. So when that turn was made, it was part of a metro sidewalk infrastructure project for Lishy Avenue. And it did not list Edwin Street. So they made that turn in order that the ADA handicap ramp was, was whole and I, do, I absolutely agree, Mr. Hargis, you see some with, with that extra piece on sometimes and some without that extra piece. But um, I do know that the spec for it is part of the corner, not the spec for a sidewalk. So the specification for a sidewalk in Nashville, which I also included, is just a straight piece. It's never a turn piece. So there's two types of specs in Nashville. One is the ADA corner and one is the straight piece. And there is not a straight piece there. That, that corner is included in the corner piece. So my testimony is that this wasn't created for sidewalks on Edwin Street, but instead for Lishy Avenue. And I would also ask this board uh, that to suggest that that um, constitutes a sidewalk instead of making the corner whole. It's not should not be uh, 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 going forward should not be the precedent. Uh, it wasn't last year, and I would ask you to understand that it probably is uh, a little bit of an overreach to think that they they made the ADA corner, and that now creates a sidewalk down Edwin Street um, uh, as part of a Lishy Avenue improvement plan. Um, I guess put another way, for us, a block face is a group of lots that front a particular street. That's what makes sense to me. And this was created from a lot that really is faces Lishy Avenue. So I think you'll find that down Edwin Street, for in, there are no Edwin Street addresses where there is a sidewalk in the front yard. And so that's why we were, we were concerned that that had changed from last year to this year. Um, there was a screen earlier that I, I just want to object to, and that it was, it's the sidewalk requirement screen where you enter your address and it tells you whether sidewalks are required. Actually, if you enter that, it says sidewalks are not required for this address. And um, I can, of course, provide that later. Uh, you got to be sure at the bottom to, cl to click one and two family, not multifamily, which is the way it starts. Um, but if you actually click on sidewalk requirements, it says sidewalks not required. And we presented all that, and uh, I actually presented that in my packet. Um, but again, my testimony is that uh, that that cannot, I can't I can't believe that that would create uh, the existence of a sidewalk on a block face from a Lishy Avenue 
sidewalk improvement plan. And if I take any questions anybody may have. Gone through the sidewalk waiver process? Uh, we have not gone through the waiver process, no. Um, and you're asking to not build a sidewalk at all. You're not asking for the ability to pay into the in-lieu fund, correct? We don't think sidewalks are required here. So if you go to the sidewalk requirement map and you put our address in, it's, they're just not required. And in-lieu is it's not necessary because they're not required. Cost to build the sidewalk? Yes, 9800 It's 50 times 196 And that's why we're here. It's a lot of money. with the understanding that when you plug it in, it says sidewalk's not required. It really does that. And I understand the zoning administrator's position on that turn creating a sidewalk, but I do not believe it creates a sidewalk in the front of an Edwin Street address. Your, your position is essentially the intent was not to build, it's not a sidewalk because the intent wasn't to build a, a sidewalk on that street. Mr. Hargis's position is Looks like a sidewalk. <laughs> it's right there, and it quacks like a lot of sidewalk. Most people would look yes. at it and say it I looks guess. like a side, part of a sidewalk. But I, you're 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 focused on that, regardless of what somebody would look at and say that it wasn't the intent. And I think that's just something we gotta. Yeah, my my what I'm saying, this piece of concrete was not created to go down Edwin Street. This piece of concrete was created to create an ADA curb on a Lishy Avenue sidewalk plan. Okay. Any other questions I'll take? I don't think there are any. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion. Yeah. So can the zoning administrator or someone confirm or deny the 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 what he mentioned about it showing up is not required on the software with a single family? I'm I'm attempting to do that. Honestly. Okay, <laughs> appreciate yeah, it. And to me, that doesn't. I mean, I don't, no. well, I, 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 things yeah. get overlooked. I mean, the, the question before us today is: Does yeah. say multifamily or non-residential on that yeah, screenshot? Yeah, I, I see that. I, I also know that there is a sidewalk down down the street from here as well, but I, that may be multifamily as well. I, I think uh, the applicant did. He 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 made you know. The most compelling arguments you can make, and I think it boils down to, I accept as given that this, this what I think looks like a sidewalk, was not really created to be a sidewalk on this street. And his argument is, if, if the intent was it wasn't to be a sidewalk on that street, even though it looks and smells and feels like a sidewalk, it's not a sidewalk. And I, I'm having. That's a tough. That's a tough one to me too. I think it's. Um, I think it's the best argument he can make, and he did a really good job with his with his materials. But I keep I just keep looking at it, and to me, I can't get around that. For whatever reason, whatever the intent was, it's it's a sidewalk existing on on the street. But anyway, it's an incredible thing to try to prove. Well, I, but Especially a, I, I, I I don't think Mr. Hargis has pushed back about that, and I think it makes sense that for an ADA, you would have a backup area, or I mean, I but. It's still, I don't think the intent cuts it for me. It's it's still a sidewalk that's there existing and, um, but others, you know, may have. I, honestly, I, I do, I have a hard time seeing it as a sidewalk. I see that as the corner piece. I don't see it as a sidewalk on that street, but, um, that, and, 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 and I can I can visual you know I think he had some examples of the but I can visualize plans in my mind you know that that they require you to wrap around a certain amount for these public infrastructure projects does that mean that there needs to be a sidewalk on this I, if there's if that if that is the reason that we're that that a sidewalk is required on the street and nothing else and I have a I I, I want to see sidewalks everywhere just like everybody else does you know like I, I want to see sidewalks there but I don't. I don't know if he should necessarily be responsible for that. If if uh, um, if that's what if that's what's what's kicking in the sidewalk requirement. Newton, you asked me a question about I, I was able to make a connection. Yeah. I'm sitting here just spinning at the moment, it's, but yeah. it'll take a moment, but it'll pop up. Uh, I mean, for for us, and and that's why I mentioned the applicant. I have no issue with somebody appealing this because it helps us in the office determine. Okay, when we see this next one, what do we do with it? Um, so there, 
I think to Ms. Carpenter's question, there was no need for him to go to the sidewalk waiver. This is more policy than substance, I guess, for particular permits. Well, do, do you, is there any reason to dispute what the applicant says that, that this was put in for the purposes of ADA compliance and not as part of a, we're going to start sidewalks on the street, but we ran out of concrete? No, I, I, I wouldn't dispute that, but I, I, you know, I've seen them where they're, like I described, they cut it off or, or you know, sort of halfway down the other block face or around that radius, they, they've chopped the ADA corner closer to one street than another, you know, that for whatever reason, utility poles or something. Um, it's just for us when we do this map and we turn the zone code talks about if it's in the block face, we count it. Um, and looking through, I've got... Can you go back to the picture where it wraps around the... Not that one. Bingo. Thank you. I mean, they could have. Well, I just can't see it. I mean, they, they. And, it, and, and immediately, it's a judgment call. I mean, whether they, oh, okay, they've, they've turned the corner or no, they've stopped. We've seen instances where it's it's just flat out as straight as it can be on the issue, and the ADA's right there. This one, we've seen them where they, it's a little bit around the radius, but not quite. Put a curb at that to, to, to block it off if you intended to block it off. If we're talking about intent now, let me just throw that one out there. Um, well, I thought he made yeah. a great argument. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not disagreeing, but I just, it's not our job to create law. But if it's, if it is that ambiguous in the sense that, well, maybe it's required, maybe it's not, I mean, should the right not go back to the property or, 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 or should the property owner be required to do something that I don't know what the ADA uh, requirement is at that point well, because that hasn't been introduced, has it? Well, he made the argument and as he, he did set forth his materials that I think he even gave us the statute. Uh, yeah. I think Mr. Argus is saying that he doesn't. It's, really, it's, 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 not, it's not necessarily an ADA thing. It's a, it's an issue of this is what Metro standard is for building an ADA corner on this sidewalk. That, whenever this one was built, I don't even, you know, that's got no, that's clue. Got no clue. But, you know, they, they have standard details for these corners on these but things. Are, and are we what, setting a policy going forward that may or may not be something we want to do? The answer to that is yes. I mean, but that's your, that's your duty as this board to set policy when there's a dispute over how the code's being interpreted. I mean, it's for us. If if we really, really disagree, we'll peel, you know, up. If we if we're like, okay, that makes sense. Um, you know, it, it helps. Um, I wasn't able to get it on my phone. I do have one of my examiners punching it in to to give me. Uh, Mr. Carpenter, Mr. Cole, you know, this is. I think this one is one that reasonable minds could have. Uh, when I first looked at it, I I thought, based on you know the, that it was put in for eight eight purposes, I thought well. Not a sidewalk, but then I keep looking at it. It looks like a sidewalk, and now I'm thinking that you're making good points, <laughs> and Mr. Lawless is also making good points. So, get help us out on, here. I was waiting on the additional information okay. to come through before saying anything, but I, to me, it does look like there is an intent to turn that corner and that there be a sidewalk on Edwin Street. To me, that seems like that's the intent. That piece of, that piece of sidewalk. It's a big chunk. Mm -hmm. Agreed, and I think it's, it's pretty clear in that it's, it's turning that corner, in my, my opinion. <laughs> but I'm hoping, I'd like to hear the new information once it's available. Um, no pressure. No pressure. This, this makes for, for great television waiting on a test. <laughs> our meeting's already like washing paint dry, so... Maybe between uh, now and our next visit here in two weeks, we'll we'll get some uh, access to the to the Wi-Fi. But um, and, and I think it's fair too. Reasonable vines can differ, and that's oh, yeah. that's no, what I this mean, board's for. And I, I have no problem if you you guys agree with the applicant. Great, it helps my examiners. You know, next time I'll know, we'll know how to do it. Um, well, somebody want to take a stab at a motion. It doesn't, sound, it doesn't sound like we're going to be getting the information that you, yeah, you need. So. Um, so we'll go with it. Well, see, the information provided was that the sidewalk is required per that. So um, we'll be upholding. Well, I w the image they had on the screen earlier yeah. was that the sidewalk was required on that street. On that street. Based on that 
program that Metro has. I but, don't know the but, name. But the screenshot also showed multifamily or non-residential. Was Clark. So, so it would be good to get the clarification. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm stalling. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are stalling. <laughs> but, um... Was that a, was that a motion? Yes, that's my motion. Oh, yeah. I was taking it. Okay. I, okay. Your motion is to approve the zoning administrator. Correct. Second for Mr. Cole. Okay. All in favor of that, say aye. Aye. Okay. That passes. Yeah, one no. I'll be opposed. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll work with the applicant on his particular construction project. If the if the if the maps pop is not required, we won't require them in this instance. But uh, it does help us for interpretation. So. Uh, Greg. Up the, Helps with it. If it, I apologize. I, I thought I could get a return pretty quick, but we'll confirm. Just, just contact me tomorrow, and we'll, we'll work through it. Okay. Next case. Where are we? Oh, that's right. Thirty-seven was consent. So be thirty. Yes. Next case is twenty twenty-two dash thirty-eight. This is a request for variance from the height restrictions for a detached garage behind the residence at 4707 Wyoming. The property is located within the RS 7.5 zoning district. We have the zoning map here, a real photograph here. This is the site plan. And this is a photograph of the current property. The this structure has already been built, and it's our understanding that whenever this rendering was reviewed initially by the zoning examiner, um, they did approve the building permit based upon the presentation that the knee wall height was within the 16 foot limitation. It's since been determined that the vertical height of that wall is actually higher than that because the dormer wall is the same wall length as the knee wall. Um, so once that came to our attention, um, a stop work order was issued and the applicant has appealed. And so to be clear for the record, what we're seeing up there now, which was is the applicant's, um, what's the architectural term, plan? Elevation. 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 That was submitted to codes and it was approved as is, and that's what was built. Yes, sir. We're talking about the overall height um, limit is 18.4, and that's at 16 feet to the eave about, so it's about two feet, four inches, as I recall. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. So the applicant may come forward, and you'll have five minutes to make your presentation. And for the record, I'll have to recuse myself on this one. Members, just one commentary from the zoning administrator. I, I do um, admit that the zoning examiner in this case missed this height restriction. Uh, this permit was issued based on what he submitted, uh, and the examiner missed, missed the height measurement to the E. We should have measured in this instance, and, and part of it's a little bit, we have lack of clarity when it comes to accessory buildings and dormers. We have plenty of clarity in the code when we're dealing with dados that are like accessory buildings because it says that the dormers have to be reset two feet, so it's easy for me to measure to the first set of roof uh, gable that I see to the eave. Uh, in this case, because the, the, the dormers are not required to be recessed, we see that as a solid wall. Uh, so I would measure to the top measurement of the eave. Uh, but the examiner, in, in defense of the, the applicant, he, he submitted what you see. We approved it. He went to construct, and we received a complaint uh, from a neighbor saying, hey, that's too high. And then on further review, yes, it is too high. So we offered him a thing. I, I don't want it to appear as though these folks did anything wrong. They 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 built the permit they submitted. It was it was a mistake in our office that occurred. Uh, my name is Oscar Anderson. I live at 4702 Utah, and we own this property 4707 Wyoming. Uh, so actually, the elevation that you see there was not what we submitted for permit. That was a variation that we tested once we got the um, stop 
uh, work order. So the, I don't believe that's what was accepted in the in the building permit. What was accepted is what I'll show you here in a second. Oh, the first one. Yes. Um, so you can see on the right um, the roof plans for the main house and the garage. Um, the idea, and we live in the neighborhood, we wanted to build something that was um, aesthetically complementing the neighborhood, um, something that was unique but fit into the context and respectful of uh, the uh, urban zoning overlay as well as the neighbors, right? And so uh, our roof line creates um, kind of a lower statue house or stature house. Um, we didn't want to appear too tall. And so we created a four to 12 pitch on the main house. To create that aesthetic relationship between the two buildings, we carried that through to the garage. Um, here you can see, you already have an um, example of the house under construction, but you know, just the idea that when you render it, and we add landscaping and, and fencing that it, it um, kind of helps, helps it fade into the perspective, right? Um, in studying the code further and trying to understand um, how up top you can see our proposed elevation and, and the relationship of that four to 12 pitch, it's a hip oh, stop. I, we can, what was your, that's what you submitted? Up top and is what we submitted, yes. For your permit, and what was, a, what was your proposed elevation on that? To the roof line? Correct. I think it was about 18 feet. Okay. Yeah. So it was higher than code, unknowing to us that we were um, breaking. But, but, but that's what you submitted, it said 18 feet. Correct, okay. correct. So it's pretty consistent with what's, what's up here, right? Well, this is a gable style roof, right? Instead of a hip roof where the roof goes all the way around. This one would have a knee wall and then dormers coming off of it. Um, so the, the knee wall, I guess, is to the lowest point, whereas with a hip-style roof, it goes straight up to the underside of the roof and it carries all the way across, right? So in studying how, if we were to uh, change the roof line to meet the 16-foot knee wall height, what we'd have to do is introduce a gable-style roof with dormers. Um, in doing that, it breaks the relationship to the main house. It, it introduces a whole new aesthetic, a whole new language, and a whole new slope to the roof line. Um, yeah, and that image shows what's proposed up top and what we would have to do in order to meet the 16-foot knee wall. Um, as well as studying kind of how that roof pitch would alter the aesthetic and the relationship between the main house and the garage. What it does is it challenges two things. A, two things. A, the, the relationship, right? The aesthetic and architectural relationship um, between the two structures. But also underneath the code in the building code where it says the knee wall height must be 16 feet, it then mentions that the roof pitch of the garage uh, should be no steeper than the predominant roof pitch of the main building. And so the main building is a four to 12 pitch and that's why we carried it over to the garage. Um, so we're at a standstill. We're not trying to, you know, get something by you here, but but introducing a new roof line um, to the garage in order to meet the 16-foot knee wall then challenges this idea of a new pitch to that roof, which is steeper than the predominant pitch of the of the main house. So your your original submission to for your permit is showed the 18-foot height of it, and that was approved, right. and that's what you're building with. That's what right. you have built out there now. Right. And then they came away, and they, this is two feet higher in these places. Right. Okay. Right. Now, we did try and get a hold of our council member many times. Unfortunately, we couldn't connect and get her input. Um, but we did, the graphic on the bottom just shows that we have signatures and support from all of the neighbors that we asked. Um, that have close proximity to the garage, so. And, and you're, it's just a kind of, you have a street on your side, I see you kind of three on, on you have two sides. It's and a an church alley. parking lot. Oh, a parking yeah, lot, yeah. okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So there is a big gap between the Yeah, two. okay, yeah. so that's what we're seeing, okay. Yeah. yeah, you're actually standing in the parking lot looking at the, gotcha. the okay. elevation, right. Okay, any questions? Uh, zoning administrator question. Okay, zoning administrator question, sorry. So when I look at the plans, it feels like a second dwelling on the site to me. And is there something you've told me in the past that needs to be signed 
that it will not be a um, second dwelling? Yeah, there's a restrictive covenant that uh, has to be recorded. Uh, the base, uh, hang on one second here. The, yeah, this this particular one is not a DADU because there's different different um, different restrictions for living space and such for this. So for us, as an accessory structure, it can't be lived in, slept in. Um, you know, have cooking facilities within. The floor plan I see here, there's a toilet, hand sink. There's a space for a tub and a shower. <laughs> for showers, I mean, they are they are permitted. Uh, I've had some discussions with some council members recently uh, about codifying exactly what's allowed in these accessory structures and to restrict, begin restricting okay. what we're allowing in these structures. So, But for us, is, is there no range plug, that's fine. Um, no sleeping quarters. He's, he's showing home office on that second floor. Um, and I, I take him at his word. Yeah, it's not meant to be a short-term rental. Um, we, we do have a lot of those recently, which oh, was I, the, con the concern that. from a couple of council members who visited with me uh, over the last two weeks about restricting what we're permitting in these structures. But, but what, I mean, what the code says, you can ever, you can't, nobody can ever sleep in there, essentially. Is that, yep. yeah, okay. Yeah. But it's evolved over time from when Sonny did it. It was used to just be toilet and a hand sink, and it sort of evolved into... Now, can we get a shower? Yes, only from the exterior only. Okay, now can we flip it to the inside? So over time, it's it's evolved, and um, but it, uh, the the council feels it's time for us to take a look and really lock down. Here's what you can and cannot have in these structures. That would be helpful. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I agree. I don't know. There's a statute floating around the legislature right now that might. <laughs> now, now this would have nothing to do with with with, with short-term rental. Uh, Understood. Well, well, it's not even the short-term rental. It's also, long-term rentals, yeah. and it's not intended. It's zoned RS, so it's not intended for a long-term rental either. So, but do y'all have anything hard. else? Are any questions for the applicants? If not, we'll close the public hearing. Okay. No, just to add that this isn't intended to be a long-term or short-term rental. It's really just a space for us to watch our kids while we work remotely at home, and to have you know a space outside of the house so that we can. Occupy it, and so it's not meant to be lived in. May I ask Joey one Thank quick you. question? I just and I'm going to yeah, yeah. sort of build up on sure. what Christina asked. It's just so we got their application. It showed the elevation that's basically there now, and oops. Okay. The the the, the examiner put the the 16 foot restriction on the purpose of the permit, but the drawings show um, what he submitted. Correct. Okay, we'll close the public hearing and discuss. I thought they did a great job, actually. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> very, very clearly like presented. Presented, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I kind of <laughs> sp sp said my if it's if it's approved in the permit, then I, I mean, for us, for a minor for a minor thing like this, if it's approved in the permit, I have to feel like, you know. Do I hear a motion come? I, I make, I'm making a motion that we approve the variance request as presented. Um, based and, on your, yeah. yeah. So we're overruling, right? Am I right? Uh, well, it's a, it's oh, a no, variance. this is it's not, 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 not a I can't wait to second your motion. Well, I just made a motion, so. So I'm seconding it. <laughs> so uh, there's been a motion to approve the variance uh, and a second. All in favor, raise your hand or say aye, aye. Any opposed, not opposed, that motion. Congratulations, thank you. Or rebuild it. Uh, for the record, because it wasn't announced, I just wanted for it to be clear that I recused myself on case uh, 2022 036, the one on Edwin. We'll go ahead and get started on our next case, which is 2022-39. This is the last case on the docket today. It's a request for a variance from a street setback. Construction of two residential units located at 2609 Alpine Park in the R10 zoning district. There's the zoning map as well as an aerial shot of the area. Photos of the streetscape. The site plan submitted by the applicant. 
contextual average setback of the four nearest homes should be 34 feet, which is slightly less than what the zoning examiner's calculation was. So I do think it's somewhat closer to what the variance requested is. Um, if you look at the four nearest properties, which would include the two properties on the other side of the circular drive. If the applicant would please come up, you'll have five minutes to make your presentation. And the request is for variance of 32 and 25 feet respectively. Thank you. Um, Alex Craw, 610 Basswood Avenue. I um, just want to thank the board. I appreciate your time and consideration today. Uh, my name is Alex Craw, and I'm an owner of CNH Properties LLC. We purchased this one acre vacant lot back in 2018 and had it subdivided in the next year into three lots, creating a new plat. We actually started. Oh, let me let me say this first. Uh, we we started building on Lot One, which fronts Alpine Park Avenue and West Street, which is very very confusing. Uh, and I've asked planning a few to or not planning, but I, I'm trying to get some of the streets up there. Some of the names changes uh, because Alpine. Alpine Avenue actually goes up a hill and then comes to a stop sign where you have four different streets in each direction. And if you turn left, you stay on to Alpine Avenue. If you turn right, you go on to Alpine Park Avenue. If you stay straight, you have about a 150 foot section of West Street and then a new street begins. But that's a different topic for a different day. Uh, we started building on lot one, which fronts Alpine Park Avenue and West Street first, uh, which was the smallest of the three lots back in 2020. Uh, due to larger side setbacks because of the frontage on West Street, those two attached homes were pushed back significantly deeper than the rest of the street at roughly 58 and then 47 feet. Um, it was in our intent um, for, further up the street um, on Alpine Park Avenue, another developer had finished building four homes before we started building, all of which had a 25 foot front setback. The street essentially ends at the top of that hill at 2617 Alpine Park Avenue. Um, it was our intent to stagger each of the next four homes that we were gonna build closer to the first four um, that were built earlier at that 25 foot front setback. We had a little bit of a challenge with topography in the back of our lots. As you climb the hill, these lots kind of fall off the backside towards Stiver Street and Unfortunately, we realize now that we should have started uh, on, this, on this last lot first, rather than build on our uh, first lot, just due to the contextual setback. Um, we feel a uh, granted variance will allow us to tie these last two homes of this street block uh, nicer uh, into the, ho the existing homes that are there. And the other intent with our setbacks moving closer to the ones that were already built is just we have front porches, uh, six, six foot and seven foot deep uh, front porches on each one of these homes. And the stagger kind of gives everyone as, as, mo as much privacy as possible. So if you, if you turn up the street, we, we really feel these two are the last two that are gonna be built here. And uh, just visually, th they would look uh, best moving them a little bit closer to the street so that the last home is in line with the, the four other ones above it. I, I also want to point out that I've, uh, there's an unimproved alley. Well, I guess they call it a street, but it was a street that was never built or improved on that sits between our last property at 2609B and the, the other house built at 2611 Alpine Park. And it actually loops around in like a semicircle that goes all the way, all the way back um, so that the homes on Stiver Street back, the homes back up to this uh, road. And, and I've been in talks with several of the neighbors in trying to abandon that. Uh, alley and street. We just haven't haven't had a chance to get a hold of everyone because I know it would take everyone's approval for this. But it's it's basically just yard that's been cut and maintained, and the only utility that's in it is an overhead power line. Um, so that th that is another effort of ours uh, to to get that abandoned and have that uh, lot property split amongst all of the property owners there. It was actually done on the other side of the street, so I'm confused why it wasn't on this side, but uh, that is what it is. All right, 
you're, you're only, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, um, uh, so the unit A, is, you're asking for 32 feet, and unit B, you're asking for 25 feet. Yes. And are you trying to, so you're trying to kind of step down to the 25 feet that's across the street. Correct. Correct, and that, that was our intention, and, and hindsight being what it is, we, sh we should have started there at 25 and 32, and then <laughs> kind of gone back, but uh, we, we ended up starting on the corner one, and due to a 20-foot side setback on that that corner lot, because of west the frontage on West Street, it kind of, we kind of uh, cannibalized the rest of our of our plan. So that the five foot setback on the unimproved right of way is because it's unimproved, right? If it was a street, you'd have that's like, correct. This is, this is, yeah, so that is correct. You're not yeah. asking for any setback there no. change. Okay. No, sir. No, no, not on the side. Alrighty. So, uh, any questions? <laughs> So what's your actual stated like hardship? Uh, our stated hardship um, is mo mostly the aesthetic, the, the neighborhood aesthetic, and then lot topography in the in the back of our lots. If, if we were to uh, build further back, I feel like the fronts of these homes would almost look at the, the, the rear of the previously built homes up on the hill and I'm just we're just trying to as this this is the last puzzle piece of our project we're we just think aesthetically that's the biggest um, biggest obstacle biggest challenge that we have um, that and the, the further deeper into the lot is the more topography and it's going to be a higher higher I guess higher crawl space to build out of um, so you're saying, so it slopes from the, fr like the front, the highest correct. part is on Alpine Park down to the back on Stiver Street? That's correct. And it's probably 20 feet or so, I would say, from. And would you say that the, uh, that disturbing the, you know, hillside could provide, could make some water issues for people in the back the more, the more you move it down? I would, I would agree with that. And also I want to point out this whole project and, and I guess we were blessed that it, it was the way that we received it. We haven't had to cut a single tree on this one acre, so <laughs> I'm very, go. I'm very happy. I wanted to mention that all, all of the trees were planted, kind of as I guess a privacy yeah, along Stivers, and we haven't had to, uh, haven't had to do, uh, eliminate any of those. So that's we have not had any water water issues, and the lots are the lots are deep enough, and uh, these last two homes are fitting in style with the the previous four that we've built. So. On the previous four that you built, did you get a variance? No. I'm going to see a, another hardship here, but I don't know if it's time yet to deliberate, so I could well, wait on that. Any more questions for the applicant? If I have closing. a question. Why isn't this a self-imposed hardship? Why would what? Like, I want the applicant to explain to me why wouldn't I consider this a self-imposed hardship, like that this hardship is unique to the land and that this was not a problem that he created or his, that the development that they did create it? Um, I guess when we approached this project from start to finish, we had a vision and um, part, part of this was, was human error on our part. Um, in hindsight, we, sh we should have started on, on that side. So I am in a way ask, asking for forgiveness for that. Uh, we, we always intended for those those two, which which are slightly bigger than the other two, I think these are 2,000 square feet each, um, to, to be as close to the street because of the contour. Um, so that's, yeah, we, we we started we started on the wrong wrong side of the street with a, with smaller homes working our, working away into a bit larger homes, but we do feel with the topography of the lot and also just the overall aesthetic of the homes that were built prior, um, that this variance would allow. Okay. Well, thank you. You got it. You know what? One interesting point to what you said, Miss Davis. It's it, the self-imposed hardship. It's the self-imposed variance in a sense. Yeah. If he had built them in a different sequence, he'd been fine. Because the the other houses could have dropped in, they were behind the contextual. So I, it's it's a weird analysis. Yeah. you know, it's kind of the opposite of. And I appreciate his saying. honest response. So like, I felt like that was honest. Like I think sometimes people will say something else, and I think he just owned it. So I appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciate really that. <laughs> I was really impressed by the answer. Like, thank you for being honest. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, it, well, we'll close the public hearing. So. Um,
So that's so what you're just out of curiosity. You're saying that by doing it the way he did, he changed the contextual step yeah, back to right. make yeah, that I mean, wire. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the there's on the lot next to Stivers. Right. That's an odd shaped lot. So those homes had to be pushed back because of that. That's an odd shaped lot. So it does. That's but but if, he, if he if he had started with these, then the the four that are across the street would have made up the contextual setback, and then been 25 feet. He could have built these wherever yeah. however he wanted to there. But I will say that the topography of the site is not self-imposed. Um, topography <laughs> is 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 what it is there. So um. good point. I mean, from that standpoint, though, it's self-imposed because you're he can build on that slope slope site, like he doesn't have to push down for it. Yeah, like it doesn't have, yeah, I agree. Like it doesn't have to be this. Like it's some of it is because, yeah, the lot's weird, but it's also because of what they're putting there. But like I said, I appreciate the honest response. And I also appreciate that if they had started where they are today, he probably wouldn't even have been before us. So I do understand that. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I, you, might could, you might could say that there, that building further on the back would create more of a, harm to neighboring properties because of the way that the site drains and you know you kind of creating a mess there with with some drainage like if you further back you build can't put any trees up there can you oh we'll, we'll definitely put a few more trees back there but uh yeah it's it well okay uh <coughs> you did your homework if you knew about trees <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything until I heard the first case, and, and I did want, want to point it out. But and if he suffered through really all of this yeah. today, you know, it's not too bad. Too bad. When I looked at this, uh, it almost looked like it might go on consent, but I felt like the architect. It makes sense. Everybody needed to see it, but um, it, 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 like like Mr. Law said, it just makes sense. I mean, it, it, it's it's in line with good a good neighborhood it's it's more contextual than frankly building at the contextual setback yeah. so um i'd say uh, yeah i, I it, it, it just makes sense to me Are you making is that I'll, so i will based on the the, the, the hardship motions, yes. so. being the yeah, topography of the lot and uh and the kind of unique nature uh, uh of the of the development pattern um i, I make a motion that we approve the variance as uh, requested second Motion has been made and seconded uh, to approve the variance. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Raise aye. your hand. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed. Congratulations. Thank you very your much. Appreciate y'all's time. <laughs> I mean, we've actually had the last two cases. Donus or that we? was our last case. Yes, correct. Sir, okay, is. we're adjourned then. All right. been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.